Hello. Okay. So um, this is going to be a lecture about cellular respiration. And just so you know, there's lots of details in cellular res involved in cellular respiration. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the one specifically that will be covered in the AP Bio standards, um, but you'll see a lot more details in your textbook, and you'll also see more in this Prezi. I'm, I'm borrowing this Prezi from another teacher, and you'll see the link to the complete Prezi on, on Google Classroom and also in the um, YouTube link here. Um, but you will also see um, on Google Classroom a link to the list of all of the standards that are covered in um, for quiz 2-2, and I would strongly recommend looking those over because it, um, like I said, there's so many details and you want to make sure that you're focusing on the things that are most important. Okay, so um, we're going to start here at the beginning. So cellular respiration, the whole point is, um, has to do with how living systems process energy. Um, so this is the process that allows us to get energy out of food. Um, and obviously that's important and we're doing it all the time. So a quick recap, hopefully this image might jog a few memories because we looked at something very similar to it in regular bio. Um, the key being here that there is a cycle going on between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So the products of photosynthesis are the reactants for cellular respiration and pretty much vice versa. So what do I mean by that pretty much? Well, um, there's a different things going on here with energy. So first, talking about the rest of it, not the energy part, the matter part. So we know that carbon dioxide, water, oxygen, glucose, all of those things are made of matter. They're all made of atoms carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms specifically. And those carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms cycle between these two processes. We can see that those are being recycled. The carbon and oxygen, carbon dioxide, goes into photosynthesis, comes out as part of glucose and oxygen, goes into mitochondria, comes out, etc. Right? Those are being cycled. The energy, meaning the light, the ATP, the heat, the energy that's stored in glucose, that energy we say flows. So that energy is not cycling between the two processes, instead it is flowing, meaning that the energy in ATP cannot then be used in photosynthesis to make sunlight, right? That doesn't happen. So energy flows in one direction, also as a result we have a bunch of heat coming out, so we're not actually even getting the same amount of energy out as we are putting in. Um, but the matter is cycling. Okay, so why does that um, matter? That matters in part because um, if we look at the two formulas for photosynthesis and aerobic cellular respiration, which is what we're focusing on here, um, the two uh, formulas should be basically just flipped versions of each other. Um, and so hopefully that can help you remember them, but also um, that shows you the relationship between the two. Okay, so we're skipping all of this. This would be an example of details that are fascinating, but not on the AP Bio exams. So not things we're going to focus on. Focusing big picture. So here's a general overview. So there are three main parts of three three main parts of cellular respiration: glycolysis. And then um, the citric acid cycle, which um, you're actually going to hear me using the term Krebs cycle more often, but they can be referred to interchangeably. And then also oxidative phosphorylation, which has two main parts, the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. So we're going to be looking at those three processes. And um, as we go along, I have um, a super basic version broken down in the notes. So I'm going to be using that to show you the most important thing as we go along. And again, the point of all of this is to make ATP. So why are we doing this whole process? It's so that we can take the food we eat and use it to make ATP that we can use to do all sorts of various things in our body. 
Remember, ATP is energy that your cells can actually use. Okay. So we start with glycolysis. So glycolysis, what happens? Um, glycolysis is cleaving, that means breaking um, into two molecules, basically breaking in half. So here are some things you need to know about glycolysis. Glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. So it does not happen in the mitochondria. It happens in the cytoplasm, meaning outside the mitochondria. Um, it does make a little bit of ATP. It also requires a little bit of ATP, but it still has a net product of some ATP. It makes some NADH, which NADH you're going to see is going to be very important when we get to the electron transport chain. Basically, NADH is an electron carrier. It's holding electrons and also a hydrogen that are going to be needed for later. Um, and then it, like I said, breaks one six carbon sugar, you can think about that like glucose, into two three carbon sugars. These are called pyruvate. So it takes one glucose molecule and turns it into two pyruvates. And this process happens in nearly all living things. So pretty cool, we're skipping all of that, um, but pretty cool that glycolysis is hypothesized to be the most ancient metabolic pathway present in modern organisms. Um, what we mean by this is that if we look at um, pretty much all living things, they all do glycolysis. So bacteria, um, even bacteria that live in pretty extreme environments, fungi, all sorts of different living things do glycolysis, and that makes us think if every living thing does it, um, even really simple ones, even ones we think we don't have anything in common with except for this, um, that tells us that probably it was something that evolved in our common ancestor a long, long time ago. Um, and so we think that uh, it's um, a hint at evolution. Okay, so brief summary, inputs and outputs. Um, again, it makes a little bit of ATP, that's gonna be important, and it also makes some NADH. Okay, so what happens next? If um, we're talking about aerobic respiration, meaning what we humans do, what um, uh, pretty much all animals do, with some exceptions, so even humans do anaerobic sometimes, but anytime we have enough oxygen, we're going to be doing aerobic because it makes um, much, much more ATP. Uh, but bacteria, and then some, in some cases, other things, will be forced to do anaerobic respiration because they don't have oxygen. So aerobic refers to with oxygen, and means without, or um, la like, uh, lacking or no, um, and then aero refers to oxygen, so anaerobic respiration is without oxygen. Um, and so that's called fermentation. Okay, so let's talk about fermentation very briefly. Basically, fermentation is what happens if you don't have oxygen. So if you don't have oxygen, you can't proceed. Oxygen is necessary for the rest of cellular respiration. So you're just going to have to survive on that little bit of ATP that you made during glycolysis. However, if you notice, glycolysis is making some NADH. And in order to make some NADH, you need to have NAD plus present to turn into NADH. So if you are only doing glycolysis, glycolysis, glycolysis at a certain point, you're going to run out of NAD plus. And so you won't be able to do glycolysis to make even that little bit of ATP anymore. So the whole point of fermentation is to make NAD+. So brief summary of fermentation. Again, the point is to turn NADH back into NAD+. It, um, as a result, is going to have a little bit of a waste product. Um, one example would be ethanol. So alcoholic drinks are made because bacteria is doing fermentation, i.e. they are fermented drinks. Um, and as a result, they're making ethanol, which is alcohol. Um, another form of fermentation, which is the type that we all do as humans, when you are, let's say, running a marathon and um, you are running low on oxygen, some of your cells will start to do something called lactic acid fermentation. 
which is um, where they don't have enough oxygen to be doing full-on um, aerobic cellular respiration. And so instead, they're going to do something called lactic acid fermentation, which is where they um, produce something called lactic acid as a waste product, but they still are able to get a little bit of ATP from glycolysis. And um, that is the reason why your muscles start to burn when you're doing a uh, long run, because you're building up lactic lactic acid. Um, okay, but, uh, oh, and that happens in the cytoplasm. Um, so this can happen in types of cells that don't have mitochondria, for example, very simple bacteria cells, they can still do this. Okay, um, so moving on. So in all other cases, um, if we have oxygen, we're going to be doing aerobic um, cellular respiration. So if we have oxygen, we will be doing um, the rest, which involves going into the mitochondria. So, um, into the mitochondria we go. Um, inside of the mitochondria, there's something called the mitochondrial matrix. So that's where we need to go to do the Krebs cycle, otherwise known as the citric acid cycle. Okay, so there's um, a specific thing that happens with acetyl-CoA. We're not going to focus on that. It's one of those details that is lovely, but um, it's a little bit too much for where we're at right now. So the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, this um, occurs inside of the mitochondrial matrix, as I just mentioned. I'm just going to give us some details on that. Um, it makes a bunch more NADH. It also makes some FADH2, which is basically just a different type of electron carrier. So NADH and FADH2 are both going to be really important for the end part called the electron transport chain. Those are carrying electrons there. They're also carrying hydrogens there. Um, it also makes a tiny bit of ATP, though that's not really the point. Um, and it also breaks um, the sugar, meaning that um, uh, sugar molecule that's coming in that was made from broken down glucose. It breaks that sugar into carbon dioxide. So all of the carbons are being broken out of that sugar and released as part of carbon dioxide. So if we think about the reactants and products for cellular respiration, we've now used the sugar, one of the reactants, we've now produced the carbon dioxide, one of the products, but we haven't yet touched on the oxygen that comes in and we haven't yet touched on the, um, uh, the water that comes out. Okay, and it is a cycle. Um, and that's why it's called the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. It is a cycle that's occurring here of um, various enzymes. Lots of enzymes are making this happen. Okay, brief summary. Basically, this is an even more summary, right? So we have our sugar come in. And then coming out, we have carbon dioxide. We have NADH, FADH2, and some ATP. So this NAD plus turns into NADH, the FAD turns into FADH2, etc. Here's a cute video of a marching band if you want to watch that in your own time. Okay. Um, next. So next we go to the inner mitochondrial membrane. Remember how we talked about how the mitochondria has that squiggly membrane inside. So this is where that comes into play. That membrane is going to be important here during oxidative phosphorylation. That is called the inner mitochondrial membrane, and that is where the electron transport chain takes place. So the electron transport chain, this is where the NADH and the FADH2 drop off their electrons that they've been carrying around. So they drop off those electrons. Let's scooch this up so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so they drop off their electrons um, and they drop them off. If we look here, this is a really useful image. So FADH2 and NADH, I'm just gonna try to make sure you can see this. Great. 
Okay, so they come in and they drop off their electrons, and when they drop off their electrons, they also drop off their hydrogen ions. Um, those electrons are carried through this thing called the electron transport chain, and at the end of it, they get picked up by oxygen. So why do we need oxygen in cellular respiration? It is to accept electrons at the end of the electron transport chain. That might not seem that important, but as we mentioned before, if we don't have oxygen, we can't do any of this, which means that we have to only do glycolysis and fermentation. So it actually is very important. So that oxygen is used to pick up the electrons at the end of the electron transport chain. It then combines with some hydrogen ions, which we'll talk about in a sec how they get there, and that turns into water. So a brief summary again of the reactants and products of cellular respiration reactants glucose and oxygen, so that glucose gets used up by the time we hit the end of the Krebs cycle. The oxygen gets used up here in the electron transport chain. Um, if we're talking about the products, so products, carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide got made during the Krebs cycle. The water gets made here in the electron transport chain. But we have something else really important to do. Remember the whole point of Cellular respiration is to make a lot of ATP, and we've only made a very little bit about very little amount of ATP so far, and that is where chemiosmosis comes in. So chemiosmosis is the second part of oxidative phosphorylation that also shows up in photosynthesis. So you're going to see that in the other lecture about photosynthesis, and this happens because there's a gradient of hydrogen ions formed. So that means that there are a lot more hydrogen ions on one side of the membrane. We're talking about the inner mitochondrial membrane. So inside that squiggly part inside the mitochondria, that's what we're talking about. On one side of it, there's now a lot of hydrogen ions. How did they get here? They got here because when NADH and FADH2 dropped off their electrons, they also dropped off a hydrogen ion. So we've got a lot of hydrogen ions on one side, and then we've got um, this thing, this enzyme called ATP synthase. ATP synthase takes, it basically is a channel that's going to allow the hydrogen ions to go through it, and when the hydrogen ions go through it, it's going to turn around, and it's actually going to turn ADP into ATP. So the... Uh, process of the hydrogen ion going through ATP synthase is what's going to make ATP. So then we make ATP. We have some hydrogen ions that are loose here. Guess what? Those get used to make the water I was just talking about with oxygen. And this process can make a ton of ATP. So um, the process of having a whole bunch of hydrogen ions on one side that can't get out any other way, they're going to be rushing through this ATP synthase as fast as they can to equal things out. Think about diffusion, right? Everything wants to equal out, so those hydrogen ions have to go through to make that happen. And so um, there's so much pressure for the hydrogen ions to get through that we're going to make a lot of ATP, and that, again, is the whole point of cellular respiration. So um, again, chemiosmosis is part of um, oxidative phosphorylation, okay? Um, and it happens because of ATP. So here are some images of what that actually looks like. Um, and again, summary of our inputs and outputs here. So we take in our NADH, FADH2, and oxygen, and we make a lot of ATP water, NAD plus and FAD plus, which can then be cycled back and used in um, doing cellular respiration all over again. Okay, um, of course, you're always welcome to ask me questions. This is just meant to be a supplementary lecture, and um, I'm now going to record one on photosynthesis. Thanks, folks.